we've discovered Kepler 22b, a small exoplanet in the Cygnus constellation. Seems like nothing important, right? But it's actually a big deal. This is the first planet located in the habitable zone that was found by the Kepler telescope. In other words, there may be water on this planet, and if there's water, there may be life. Kepler 22b can become our new potential home. So let's take a closer look at it. Actually, discovering new planets is not easy at all. Not all of them can be seen through our super cool telescopes, even the almighty Hubble. Sometimes, the stars are so small and dim that it's really hard to find them on a map. The same thing happened with Kepler-22. In such cases, scientists have to use a special method. First, they take a bunch of photos of the star in different periods of time. Then, they look at them and think, hmm, are there any dark dots on this star somewhere? And if they find one, that might be a planet. These photos actually help us to discover some very important stuff. Like, first of all, this planet exists. Secondly, here is its size, radius, and proximity to the star. And finally, will we be able to live there? Now we know that Kepler-22b is very similar to our planet and could potentially become a second Earth. It's also very close to us, only 635 light years away. Yeah, it's about 3 quadrillion miles, but this is one of the closest options. Kepler-22, the star of Kepler-22b, is a yellow dwarf. It's very, very similar to our Sun. The same size, the same radius, even the age is almost the same, 4 billion years. The difference is only in luminosity. It's about 20% dimmer than the Sun. So, no matter how much you strain your eyes, you won't see this star in the night sky. The planet Kepler-22b is about 2.4 times larger than our Earth, and that's pretty good. More radius means more potential water and space to live. Although going from one city to another would take a while. It's scary to even imagine a three-day long plane flight. We don't know the exact mass of this planet, but scientists think it's bigger than Earth's. Actually, the mass of Kepler-22b can be up to 36 times greater than that of our planet. What does it mean? Vigorous gravity. If the planet is 36 times heavier than Earth, then gravity there will be about 6 times stronger. Can you barely lift 20 pounds of potatoes? Try 120! Not to mention that you yourself can become much heavier on that planet. You'll have to get incredibly pumped up just to walk there. You have to literally turn yourself into a bodybuilder just to get to work. The worst thing is that, with such gravity, it'd be incredibly difficult for plants to survive there. They'd need at least a little freedom to rise up from the ground. And animals. Our dogs and cats would have to turn into little balls of muscle to survive there. But if this planet has its own animals or other inhabitants, we can roughly imagine what they may look like. They probably have a lot of legs to make moving easier. They aren't really tall, but they're very massive and extremely strong. Hmm, muscular giant spiders? Could be worse, I guess. The good news is that this is all unconfirmed information. If we're very lucky, and gravity there turns out to be just a bit stronger than Earth's, then, of course, it'll be much easier to live there. The next thing we know about Kepler-22b is that it's about 15% closer to its star than we are to the Sun. If Kepler-22b existed in our solar system, it would be located somewhere between Earth and Venus. Does that mean we're all going to burn? No, silly. As I mentioned before, the star Kepler-22 is pretty cold, just some 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why we can assume that the temperatures on Kepler-22b will be about the same as we have on Earth. If the planet orbits its star the same way Earth orbits the Sun, which we don't actually know, Kepler-22b can rotate around its star on its side, like, for example, Uranus. What? Didn't you know Uranus is actually lying on its side? Also, look at its rings. Yes, Uranus also has rings, like Saturn, but they're vertical. The universe is truly a mysterious place. 
So, if Kepler-22b is really something like that, then the weather on the planet will be, to put it mildly, not very good. Incredibly cold winters will be regularly followed by hot summers. And, just like with tidally locked planets, we'd be able to live more or less comfortably only on the narrow piece of land between these two crazy sides. Let's hope that this is not the case and the planet rotates normally. But it's not all that bad. Studies show that there may be an ocean on Kepler-22b. You already know that water means life, but in this case, it's also a big plus because a planet covered by an ocean always has more stable temperatures. The water absorbs some of the heat and distributes it evenly across the planet. The hot parts cool down and the icy ones warm up. By the way, that's exactly what happened to Earth billions of years ago. When our planet started getting its first little puddles, our beloved moon helped these puddles to spread all over the planet. Thanks to this, a burning horror that used to be our Earth turned into a cute little ball full of life. So if Kepler-22b has water but no atmosphere, scientists think that the average temperature there could be around 12 degrees Fahrenheit. But if there's also an Earth-like atmosphere, then the temperature can reach 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be nice. And finally, one year there is equal to 290 Earth days, about nine months. The planet has no natural satellites, so unfortunately, we'd have to say goodbye to a beautiful view of the moon. On the bright side, we'd probably be able to see the sun as a distant little star. We could admire it in the night sky, remembering our home, while not hiding from giant spiders. And this is all that we know at the moment. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to explore such planets, so there's a lot of very important data that we don't know. For example, what kind of planet is this anyway? Yep, we're missing the most important information about Kepler-22b. We don't know if it's a rocky planet or not. And if not, then all the previously mentioned information means nothing. It may turn out to be a gas planet, or a planet covered with gas but with a solid core, like Neptune, or a water world covered with a giant ocean. In this case, it better be a water planet. Then at least we could build some kind of underwater city there. We could filter the water and eat fish until we evolve into an amphibious species. Does it even count as evolution if we go back to our roots? Scientists, however, think that Kepler-22b may turn out to be a Neptune-like planet. Some astronomers have even assigned the planet to a category of mini-Neptunes. Yes, this is a real planetary category. But this hasn't been proven yet. But even if, fortunately for us, Kepler-22b turns out to be a rocky planet, we still don't know what the atmosphere is like there. Does it exist at all? What if it turns out to be something like the atmosphere of Venus? which is more toxic than your ex. Then we'd have to dig deep underground to somehow survive on this planet. And then we'd have to come up with a heat source because it's pretty cold underground. Yeah, let's hope this won't be the case. There are many possibilities with Kepler-22b. So far, we don't have a clear answer, but let's hope that scientists will find it before we load the first people into shuttles and send them to conquer Kepler-22b. That would be awkward if it turns out to be a gas planet, or something like that. It's the year 2600, and the new Frontiers program has finally begun. You've got the list of planets to plan dwellings for, and the first one is Venus. The Earth's evil twin sister meets you with a refreshing 800 degrees Fahrenheit and a beautiful sulfuric acid rainstorm. First of all, the heat means living on the surface here is next to impossible. So you immediately put the prospective house several dozen feet underground. The walls, floor, and ceiling must be made of some heat-resistant and durable material. So you make them out of hafnium carbide. Discovered way back in 2016, it withstands temperatures of over 7,000 degrees. Next, you install the air cooling and purification system. It captures the toxic air from the Venusian atmosphere and pulls it through a complex network of filters, delivering breathable air to the dwelling. As an added benefit, the temperature of this air can be easily turned up thanks to what's going on outside. You can create a separate room below the main space and dub it the generator room. 
The device there will use the almost infinite geothermal energy of the planet to provide the house with electricity. You think for a moment and add a geothermal bathroom as well. There's no water on Venus, but it can be extracted and separated from its acidic clouds. The piping system would include a heating unit for hot water and a cooling unit with liquid nitrogen for cold water. Another separate space is the garden. Since no plants can't survive on the surface, you create a spacious hall with bright lights on the ceiling and a sprinkler system throughout the area. You have large patches of soil for vegetables, several acres for fruit plants, and a big patch in the center for a couple of long-living trees like oaks. They'll provide additional oxygen for the whole building. The garden is encased in a shell of hafnium carbide as well, so that the plants don't wilt in the excess heat of the Venusian soil. You check if everything's accounted for and go to your next stop. Saturn. It's a gas planet, but there's a thin yet stable layer that can be called the sweet spot. Its temperature is just right for humans to feel fine. You create a hover platform to build your house on. There's just no solid ground on Saturn at all. The platform's equipped with wind-powered turbines. The winds on the gas giant reach incredible speeds, so it will need to counteract them, at the same time feeding from the hurricanes. The pressure and temperature are just about right in this place, so your main concern is the wind again. You make the dwelling low and looking almost like a frisbee for better aerodynamics. The walls and roof are made from a single slab of sturdy metal so that powerful gusts can't tear the roof away. You also make them several feet thick and add some windows with space-grade glass panes that won't break. Water can be extracted from another layer using a series of similar platforms with built-in pipes. Electricity and heat are no problem either, thanks to the powerful winds. The only problem here is food, but it can be imported from other inhabited planets at first, along with the fertile soil for the garden. You create a space for it on another hover platform for the future. Satisfied with your results, you head to the next destination on your list, Europa. This moon of Jupiter's is covered in a miles-thick crust of ice full of canyons and crevices. But deep below, there's a whole ocean of salt water bigger than all the oceans on old Earth taken together. You take it into account and go for an underground dwelling again. The temperature is freezing, but the closer you are to the hot planetary core, the warmer it is. You place the dwelling as deep as you can to safely extract water from the underground ocean. The walls and ceiling are padded with insulation, and in the cellar, there's a home water purification system that turns salty water into the potable kind. Since there's no atmosphere to speak of, the breathable air is extracted from the ice. As it melts, the water vapor is collected and filtered, then enriched with other necessary substances and delivered to the dwelling. As for food, you go for an unusual solution – edible marine plants and fish. You create a separate tank to cultivate algae right in the ocean, and different kinds of fish can be imported from old Earth and other inhabited planets to breed on Europa. Next stop? Pluto. The tiny dwarf planet, just one-sixth of old Earth in width, has a great potential for terraforming. So you immediately create a big dome for your dwelling. The sun shines much weaker here than in any other place in the solar system, so you make sunlight-enhancing panels all across the dome. They'll allow the surface underneath to receive more light and warmth, bringing the area to a comfortable temperature. The ice on Pluto consists of frozen water, just like on Earth. So you build a station for melting it and collecting the resulting liquid into large tanks for later use. There's also a possible liquid ocean deep under the surface, so you add a deep drilling platform but put a question mark on it. You don't know if it's going to be useful yet. With the area warmed up and well lit, you make a pretty ordinary dwelling like ones we're used to on old Earth and terraform Mars. A couple of stories, carbon or titanium alloyed walls and ceiling for durability, and a fortified cellar. Still, you also add emergency insulation padding that will only trigger if something happens to the lighting dome. If it's breached, the temperature will quickly drop to below freezing. There's also very little atmosphere on Pluto, so breathable air will have to be generated from the ice again. This time, you combine the water collecting system with the air generating facility. 
While one produces potable water, the other will collect vapor and enhance it with all the necessary elements. You even go as far as to create a weather controlling device. It will heat up or cool down different layers of the produced air and mix them together to create winds and rain clouds just like on old Earth. This will allow crops to grow in a more natural environment, and Pluto might even become a green planet one day. Right above, in the dark blue sky, Pluto's biggest moon, Charon, is hanging. It's half the dwarf planet in size, which makes it a spectacular view. Its climate is almost identical to that of Pluto's. In a fit of inspiration, you create a vacation home for Plutonians. Here, under a similar dome, they'll be able to explore another little world and look at their dwarf planet from the other side. Which is always the same side, by the way, like the Earth's moon, which reminds you of the next destination. Zarmina, previously known as Gliese 581g, is 41 light years away, the longest trip so far. The planet's tidally locked to its sun, which means there's perpetual day on its one side and eternal night on the other. It's not only about light, but heat as well. The day side is much hotter, and the night side is partially covered in ice. Unless we terraform the planet, the most comfortable area to inhabit is right between the two sides, called the Terminator Zone. It's neither too hot nor too cold here, and there's an eternal twilight. The sun is always just above the horizon. The good news is that the atmosphere on Zarmina, although volatile, is rather close to the old Earth's. But you still cover the selected area with a protective dome just in case. Human dwellings here don't have to be specially protected from the elements. And there's liquid water, too. You build a pretty generic house, much like the one on Pluto, but then add a few crucial details. First, the weather controlling device. Despite the old Earth-like atmosphere, dwellers will need a stable change of weather to grow crops. Then you cover the dome with moving plates. Living in a constant dust might be pretty depressing, so the plates will move in 12-hour patterns. During the daytime, they will turn to enhance the sunlight, while at night, they'll deflect it back, making the sky dark. After that, you travel to both edges of the Terminator zone and install geothermal plants. On the hot side, the plant will generate energy for all the settlers' needs and take hot water to use in households. On the cold side, the system will make cold water for the ice. The night side can also be used as a giant refrigerator. Dwellers could store things they need frozen here. To make it easier to access, you stretch the dome from edge to edge and create some simple storage facilities where the night begins in earnest. We've been focusing on trying to find life on Mars so much, while there is this gem waiting to be explored. This planet is the sixth farthest from the Sun and the second largest in the solar system. You'll find it right behind Jupiter. I'm talking about Saturn, or as they sometimes call it, the jewel of the solar system. It's so different from our planet. First of all, you wouldn't be able to stand there. While Earth consists of rock and other tough stuff, this planet is like a giant ball, mostly made of gases. If you found a swimming pool huge enough to fit Saturn, you could see the planet floating in the water. No wonder. Saturn is the least dense planet in the solar system. It also contains a lot of helium. You know, the gas you put in balloons to make them hover in the air. Saturn is a very windy planet. Winds there are more than four times stronger than the ones we have on Earth. A day over there lasts 10 hours and 14 minutes because Saturn spins on its axis pretty fast. But the planet takes its time while going around the Sun. A year there equals 29 Earth years. Saturn's radius is more than 36,000 miles. It means the gas giant is nine times wider than our planet. If Earth was the size of a nickel, Saturn would be as big as a volleyball. Even though some of our planets in our solar system also have rings, Saturn's are the most spectacular ones. You can even see its rings from Earth. And no, you don't have to be a scientist with insanely expensive equipment. All you need is a small telescope. Saturn's rings are not firm. They are made of pieces of dust, rock, and ice. Some of them are as small as grains of sand, and some as big as a house or even a mountain. These are actually bits of asteroids, comets, and shattered moons that fell apart before reaching Saturn. They could be torn into pieces by the planet's powerful gravitational pull. Saturn has over 50 moons, and recently, scientists have discovered some unusual hydrothermal activity on one of them. Enceladus is Saturn's sixth biggest moon, it has four tiger stripes close to one of its poles. Researchers have found that there is an ocean underneath these stripes. 
Water and ice erupt from that area. So now we can't but wonder, maybe there's life out there. In the oceans on Earth, some forms of life gather around similar hydrothermal vents. They feed on the chemicals there, same as plants on the surface do with sunlight. And not only that, some of the oldest microbial life on our planet feed on the same energy as the one produced beneath the ocean surface on Enceladus. It could potentially mean there's life developing there right now. Of course, it takes millions and millions of years for even the simplest organisms to appear. But hopefully, scientists will need less time to find more complex forms of life. There are millions of exoplanets out there in space, and scientists have been searching for those that could be potentially habitable. Exoplanets are planets orbiting a star outside of our solar system. Dwarf stars are similar, less luminous than the Sun. They sometimes live for more than 10 billion years. That's enough time for a living organism to develop and evolve into a more complex form. Life might appear on the planets orbiting such dwarf stars, or, like with Saturn, on one of their moons. And here it is, Gliese 876b that orbits the red dwarf star Gliese 876. This planet is mostly a mystery, but scientists assume this is a gas giant that has no solid surface. They believe its atmosphere doesn't have clouds, but there might be water in its liquid form on the planet's surface. T. Gardens B orbits a red dwarf that's around 12 light years away from our solar system. The planet's mass is just a bit higher than that of Earth. Scientists think it may have a rocky surface. The planet needs around five days to complete its orbit. It means that one year on T. Gardens B is actually shorter than one week on Earth. Somewhere far, far away, there's another potentially habitable planet named Kepler 1638b. Okay, to be more precise, it's 3,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. This planet is four times as heavy as Earth and twice as wide. It needs almost 260 days to complete one orbit around its star. The gravity on this planet is stronger than that on Earth. It wouldn't be an easy feat to jump on its surface. One more Kepler coming along. This time, it's Kepler 62e, a planet that's more than one and a half times the size of Earth. Scientists believe this one has a warm, humid, and hospitable atmosphere with cloudy skies. There are 1,200 light years between Earth and this planet. Kepler 62e needs 122 days to orbit its red dwarf star. Its neighbor, Kepler 62f, is another potentially habitable zone. It's a world around 40% bigger than Earth. Scientists think this planet might be covered in water. The oceans on our planet are full of interesting creatures and organisms of all sizes. So the chances are, this planet also hides some intriguing living beings, or at least, it has the potential to develop life. When we say habitable, it doesn't mean life definitely exists there. It just means there are conditions for some forms of life to develop. LHS 1140b is a planet located in one of the potentially habitable zones. Unlike its gas companions, it's solid and quite rocky. The planet's radius is 60% larger than that of Earth, and its mass is seven times bigger. It's one of the densest planets found out there. Since the planet has a big mass, an atmosphere there must be rather thick. Plus, gravity on its surface is much stronger than here on Earth. That's why you would likely have problems just standing on that planet. Hello and greetings from TRAPPIST-1, an ultra-cool dwarf in the constellation Aquarius. It's around 39 light years away from us. Seven Earth-sized rocky planets are orbiting in the star's habitable zone. All of them can potentially have some water on their surfaces. The temperature on these planets is more or less similar to that on Earth. On the Moon, gravity is only 16% of what we have on our home planet. That's why the astronauts could hardly control their movements when they visited our natural satellite. But when it comes to the gravity on TRAPPIST-1 planets, you would probably feel good and comfortable there. And Kepler, once again. This time, it's Kepler 452b. It's a rocky planet 60% larger than Earth. Its parent star is similar to our Sun. This planet has actually spent around 6 billion years in the habitable zone, while Earth has been there for a mere 4.5 billion years. This planet needs 385 days to orbit Kepler 452. This star is around 20% brighter than our Sun, but has the same temperature. The whole system is very far from our little oasis. It would take you 28 million years to get there. And now, how about KOI 7711.01?
It's another intriguing world 1,700 light years away from us. This planet is only 30% bigger than Earth. It gets almost the same amount of heat as we receive from our sun. Sometime in the future, people might start colonizing the galaxy. They would be looking for new planets to live on. Then we'd certainly have to make really long trips. And maybe one day, we'd reach Proxima Centauri. It's a nearby star that has a couple of planets we could potentially inhabit, like Proxima Centauri b. It's around four light years away from Earth, and it doesn't sound that far at first, but it actually is. It would take about 6,300 years to travel there, if we use the technologies that are available these days. It would mean many, many generations to make a trip like that, and it would take even longer to finally inhabit that new world. People would be born and raised on spaceships. They would live their lives there without ever seeing either Earth or the planet they're heading to. Instead of trees, mountains, and rivers, there would be only the dark nothingness of faraway galaxies spreading in front of them. They would never be able to wander unknown streets, breathe in the fresh air, feel the wind. The only place for them to travel to would be another part of the ship. Certainly, such a journey wouldn't be simple, but it would pay off if people managed to build some more beautiful worlds like the one we have here on Earth. Is that even possible? Time will tell. For decades now, scientists have been discovering new planets outside our solar system. By 2023, we've found more than 5,000 of them, and many of these exoplanets could potentially even have life. Now, if you're ready for a wild ride through space, let's find out what potentially habitable planets we've discovered in the last few years. LP890-9b and LP890-9c Buckle up, because we're heading to LP890-9, a red dwarf star located a whopping 105 light years away from Earth. This star is quite cool compared to our sun, in terms of temperature, of course. It has a temperature of about 4,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this little guy may be small, but it's packed with surprises. For example, two exoplanets orbiting around it. Moreover, both of these planets are likely terrestrial, meaning they are rocky just like Earth. First up, we have LP90-9b, which was discovered in 2022 using the TESS telescope and later confirmed by the Speculoos telescope. This planet is a super-Earth, weighing in at about 13 times the mass of our own planet. It's also slightly bigger than Earth, with a radius about 1.3 times larger. And if you thought Mercury's orbit around the Sun was quick, just wait until you hear about LP890-9b. It takes about three days to complete one lap around its star. Imagine falling asleep in freezing winter and waking up in hot summer. But the real showstopper here is LP890-9c. This one was discovered by the Speculoos Telescope. It's a bit further out from the star and takes a leisurely 2.5 times longer to orbit than LP890-9b. It's also a bit larger than Earth. But its real claim to fame is its location within the habitable zone of its star. That means it could potentially have liquid water on its surface and a climate suitable for life. Now this planet becomes a prime candidate for studying its atmosphere using the James Webb Space Telescope. But hold on, it's not all sunshine and rainbows for LP890-9c. It's also really close to its star, meaning it's full of radiation that could potentially make it less habitable. And to top it off, it's tidally locked, just like our moon. That means one side of the planet is always facing the star and is incredibly hot, while the other is always in the dark and really cold. Scientific models suggest that this planet could be more like Venus in terms of its atmosphere and climate. And Venus is, you know, isn't known for being human-friendly. But despite these challenges, LP890-9c is still a fascinating exoplanet worth studying further. Who knows what secrets it may hold? Let's move on to the next candidates. GJ1002b and GJ1002c an international team of scientists led by researchers at the Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias has found two Earth-like planets just 16 light years away from our solar system. They both orbit a red dwarf star called GJ1002. 
Our sun is a yellow dwarf, which means that GJ1002 is much cooler and fainter than our own sun. But that's okay. Both planets are very close to its star, so it shouldn't be too cold or dark on them. These planets, called GJ1002b and GJ1002c, are both in the habitability zone of their star, meaning they could potentially support life. Also, both of them have masses similar to that of Earth. GJ1002b is the inner planet and takes about 10 days to orbit its star, while GJ1002c takes a little over 21 days. These planets are great candidates for studying their atmospheres and could even be targets for future missions to search for signs of life. The most important thing is that these two planets could potentially support life, and that's pretty cool. Plus, the fact that they're located so close to us means that we might be able to visit them someday. Well, maybe not us personally, but you know. And maybe one day, we'll even find some extraterrestrial life on one of these planets. Now that would be out of this world, but moving on to the next one. Kepler-1649c Kepler-1649c, also known as the Lost Exoplanet, was rediscovered in 2022 by scientists using data from NASA's Kepler spacecraft. This exoplanet is located about 300 light years away from Earth and orbits a small, cool star called Kepler-1649. It's about the same size as Earth, and just like the previous ones, it's located in the habitable zone of its star. Initially, the data about this planet was discarded. A special computer program called RoboVetter, written to automatically sift through the volumes of Kepler data, labeled this candidate as a false positive. In other words, the program thought it was just some kind of an error or interference. Fortunately, the researchers double-checked such things. And when rechecking the data, they managed to rescue poor Kepler-1649c. Now we know that this is a terrestrial planet just like Earth. And if it really does contain water, there could even be life there. But don't pack your bags just yet. There are still many unknowns about Kepler-1649c. For example, we don't know what its atmosphere is like or what kind of surface it has. It's also possible that the planet is tidally locked just like LP890-9C. That would be, uh, unpleasant. That's why Kepler-1649C is definitely worth further study. Maybe it turns out to be a perfect place for us to set up a vacation home in the future. Just make sure to bring plenty of sunscreen since the planet is pretty close to its star and things could get pretty... toasty. Kepler-1638B. This exoplanet is located about 5,000 light years from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. It's also located in the habitable zone of its star. It was discovered in 2020 by the Kepler spacecraft through the process called transiting. They basically take a bunch of photos of the star at different times. After that, the programs analyze these photos and look for small spots and dots on them. These tiny dips in brightness may mean that a planet was passing by the star. Kepler-1638b is a bit of an oddball compared to most exoplanets we've found so far. It's about four times the mass of Earth and has a radius about two times that of Earth, making it a super-Earth exoplanet. Its orbital period is about 260 days, which is quite close to our Earth, and that's great! Finally, at least somewhere, winter and summer will flow normally. Kepler-1638b could have some liquid water there. That's why it's also a good candidate for further study, to see if it could potentially support life. Let's hope that we'll find out more about this planet in the future. And finally, the last one. Kepler-438b. Kepler-438b is an exoplanet located approximately 640 light-years away from Earth in the constellation Lyra. It was discovered in 2015 by the Kepler Space Telescope. One of the most interesting things about Kepler-438b is its size and location. It's about the same size as Earth and also orbits within the habitable zone of its star. But there are a few catches. For one, Kepler-438b orbits around a red dwarf star, which are known for their high levels of solar radiation and flare-ups. 
This could make the surface of the planet too hostile for life as we know it. In addition, Kepler-438b has a much shorter year, only around 35 Earth days long. This could lead to extreme temperature fluctuations on the planet's surface, but maybe it's home to some hardy extraterrestrial life forms that have adapted to its unique conditions, or maybe not. Either way, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. This is a small list of exoplanets that we've discovered in recent years. Now, with the use of new technologies, we'll be able to find new exoplanets much more often. Let's hope that at least a few of them will really be inhabited. As scientists continue to explore the vast expanse of the universe, they've made some incredible discoveries that have left them with more questions than answers. From a scorching super-Earth to a football-shaped world, the exoplanet discoveries of 2022 are truly out of this world. So hold on tight, the future of exoplanet discoveries is looking brighter than ever. Number 1. New type of exoplanets Red dwarfs make up over 70% of all stars in space. So in September of 2022, scientists decided to take a closer look at the small worlds orbiting them. What they found was amazing new type of exoplanets that were made of half rock and half water, either in liquid or ice form. The researchers suggested that these planets likely arose from icy material and were born far away from their stars, past the ice line, where surface temperatures are freezing. But they later migrated closer in, to where the astronomers detected them. This discovery could have huge implications in the search for life in the cosmos. Though these planets are loaded with water, they might not be covered in oceans. Who knows? Maybe one of them will be the next Earth 2.0. Number 2. Jupiter-sized world Imagine a planet so massive and mysterious, it's like a hidden Jupiter in our galaxy. Well, we just discovered one of those orbiting a star just 379 light-years away. Just. <laughs> We've named it the TOI 2180b, and it's got everyone talking. Why? Well, for starters, this planet takes a whopping 261 days to orbit its star, which is much longer than most distant gas giants we've come across so far. But that's not all. The temperature on this world is surprisingly mild, averaging at a balmy 170 degrees Fahrenheit. For comparison, the temperature on Jupiter and Saturn is around minus 280 degrees. It's like a bridge between the giant exoplanets we've found and our Jupiter. But the question remains, how did this planet get to be so different? Scientists are still trying to figure that out. Let's hope that we get some answers soon. Number 3. The Hulk Planet This world is a place where the surface is covered in molten magma, and the year lasts just half a day. Welcome to TOI 1075b, an exoplanet that's been dubbed the Planet Hulk by scientists. Located 200 light-years away, this super-Earth is one of the most massive ever discovered. Its proximity to its parent star causes its surface to reach scorching temperatures of 1,922 degrees. It's so hot that any form of water would evaporate instantly, and the air would be filled with vaporized rock. But it's not just the heat that's impressive, it's also its size. It's of Earth, making it one of the most massive super-Earths ever discovered. But the mystery doesn't stop there. The planet's orbit takes just 14 and a half hours, making it one of the shortest orbital periods ever recorded for a planet of its size. What an exciting addition to our catalog! Number 4. Three Doomed Planets Astronomers made a shocking discovery of three planets that are circling in a dangerous dance next to the slowly fading stars. Just a decade ago, scientists never even imagined such planets could exist. These gas giant planets, similar in size to Jupiter, orbit way too close to their slowly fading stars. They're basically walking on the edge. Take one of them, for example, dubbed TOI 2337b. Its orbit will likely send it hurtling straight into the fiery arms of its host star in less than a million years. Well, I won't be around then. As these stars enter their final days, they're pulling in nearby planets like a black hole altering their orbits and potentially causing catastrophic collisions. And as these planets get closer to their stars, their atmospheres heat up and swell, leading to some mind-boggling differences in density. 
But despite the doom and gloom, studying these worlds could give us valuable insights into the evolution of our own solar system. Number 5. Planet with a barium's atmosphere. These are two hot blazing planets each with an atmosphere made of the heaviest element ever found in an exoplanet, barium. These planets, known as WASP-76b and WASP-121b, are ultra-hot gas giants called super-Jupiters that orbit incredibly close to their stars. These planets are basically like giant balls of fire, with one side facing the star, cooking at temperatures hot enough to vaporize iron and other metals. But as the hot iron vapor is blown into the planet's cooler night side, it turns into liquid and falls as iron rain. And these planets held a special surprise for us. Barium is a heavy metal, about two and a half times as heavy as iron. And yet, scientists were able to detect it in the upper layers of these planets' atmospheres. This is truly a mystery and a puzzle we're still trying to solve. Imagine landing on a planet like this and looking at this rain of iron and the heavy barium in its skies. That would be awesomely horrifying. Number 6. The Football Planet Get ready to have your mind blown, space enthusiasts, because we've just discovered the ultimate football-shaped planet, and it's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Meet WASP-103b, the ultra-hot exoplanet that's more than a thousand light-years away from Earth. This gas giant is so close to its parent star that its shape is being stretched by the intense gravitational forces. But this isn't just a fun shapeshifter. It's also a valuable scientific discovery. By studying the planet's passes across its star, we were able to measure its deformation for the first time ever. It's like taking a snapshot of a planet in motion, and it's giving us insights into the extreme conditions that these planets can endure. This is truly a great discovery. Number 7. A Zodiacal Light Are you ready for a cosmic ghost story? Scientists and high school students in China have uncovered a spooky phenomenon on three distant exoplanets. It's called Zodiacal Light, a glow that's similar to the one seen here on Earth during sunset. But this isn't just some eerie light show. It could hold clues about the makeup of these potentially habitable worlds. Imagine watching the sunset from a dark spot on Earth, and instead of darkness, a triangle of light appears. That's zodiacal light. It's caused by sunlight reflecting off dust particles that fill the solar system, the remains of asteroids and comets. A team of researchers analyzed 47 potential habitable exoplanets named Kepler-69c, Kepler-1229b, and Kepler-395c, all super-Earths, had signs of this light. This discovery is more than just a spooky phenomenon. It could reveal information about the presence of asteroids and comets in these exoplanet systems, which could be difficult to detect otherwise. So, that's pretty neat. Number 8. A planet with silicate clouds Introducing VHS-1259b, not a home video recording system, but a strange and exotic world shrouded in mystery and wonder. A place where the clouds are made of sand and the sky is forever red. This isn't the stuff of science fiction, but a real-life discovery made by the brilliant minds at NASA. This is a brown dwarf exoplanet that's making waves in the astronomical community. It's way too massive for a planet, nearly 20 times the size of Jupiter, but it's not quite a star. It's something in between, a cosmic enigma that defies definition. But what's really crazy about VHS 1256b is its atmosphere. Scientists have discovered that this strange world is cloaked in thick clouds of silicate grains, similar to sand. It's the first time this kind of cloud has ever been detected on an exoplanet. And it's a discovery that's sure to change the way we think about the universe and the possibilities of life beyond our world. And there you have it, folks. The year 2022 was filled with incredible discoveries and groundbreaking findings in the world of exoplanets. But this is just the beginning, as scientists and researchers continue to explore the vast expanse of space. We can only imagine what other wonders await us. So, let's keep looking. Who knows what secrets the stars hold for us next? You're gazing up at the night sky. Wow! For much of our history, we've been looking for life among these stars and the planets near them. 
but space has eyes too. And there's someone out there looking at us, maybe. Scientists claim that at least 29 distant planets may be watching us right now. So comb your hair and smile. We've so far identified at least 1,715 neighboring star systems in the Milky Way that can detect our planet with conventional telescopes. These stars are located in our galaxy. So if they were to point their telescopes at our sun, sooner or later they would see a small dot that passes between our home star and the observer. This is called a transit. It's a method of detecting planets in astronomy. For example, you can observe transit phenomenon right at home with a telescope. You have to point it at the sun and wait. Then you'll see Mercury. That's the closest planet to the sun, and now you see it as a small dot. Mercury transit process can last about 5 hours, and this phenomenon happens about 14 times in a century. You'll be able to observe the next transit on November 13th, 2032. Mark your calendar. Likewise, you can observe Venus, the second planet from the Sun. But because it's farther away, its transits are less frequent. The last one was in 2004 and 2012. The next pair of transits is expected in 2117 and 2125. Hey, I won't be around then. So these star systems have the opportunity to observe our planet. But long-range telescopes work a little differently. Actually, the observer will not see a black dot with the sun in the background. The telescope will measure the brightness of our star. When Earth begins its transit between the sun and the observer, the telescope will record a slight drop in the brightness of the star because our planet is blocking the path of the sun's rays. Those far-away scientists of extraterrestrial civilizations will be able to calculate this drop in brightness and determine the size of our planet. But not all 1,700-plus star systems may have extraterrestrial life. Scientists have narrowed it down to 29 planets near some of these stars. They're potentially habitable. That means these planets are roughly Earth-like in size and within the habitable zone of their host star. That means they're not too close to the star, so it's not too hot for potential life. The water doesn't evaporate there like in a boiling pot. And they're not too far away so it's not too cold and the water doesn't freeze into thick sheets of ice. And since water is the basis of life, we can assume that civilization might exist there. Theoretically, these planets could have seen Earth transits in the last 5,000 years. So, while we were building the pyramids of Giza or Stonehenge, an extraterrestrial civilization may have been watching us. One of these planets is only 11 light years from our home. Near the Ross 128 star, a red dwarf in the constellation Virgo. There's an exoplanet about twice the size of Earth and right in the habitable zone of its host star. Theoretically, the inhabitants of this planet could see Earth transit the Sun on a regular basis for 2,000 years. But about 900 years ago, the planet lost its position and can no longer continue observation. The other planet where Earth can be seen transiting is 12.5 light-years away, near the star called Tea Garden. The window for observing our planet will open there in about 29 years. We're betting heavily on the TRAPPIST-1 star system. It hosts at least 7 exoplanets, almost like our solar system. And 4 of them are in the habitable zone of the star. But they won't be able to start observing Earth until 16 centuries from now. But we can try to make contact with these planets right now. They're all close enough to us to pick up our radio signals. Radio waves can travel through space at the speed of light, and our planet has been emitting radio signals continuously since 1895. So we're like noisy neighbors in the radio spectrum. If there's a planet somewhere with an intelligent civilization within 125 light years of us, our radio noise would have already reached them. The only problem is, it would take about the same time to get a response from that civilization. The other problem with radio is that any civilization uses it for a relatively short period. Even now on Earth, we use Bluetooth and fiber optics more than radio, except for maybe traffic reports. 
And over time, all the radio noise we create will simply disappear. Also, radio communication assumes that an extraterrestrial civilization is advanced enough to use this technology. But who knows? Maybe there are life forms in space that are really different from ours. Our radio signals already could have reached that planet, but its inhabitants simply aren't capable of receiving them. And the moment these life forms build antennas to receive the signal, we'll no longer emit them. But we don't lose hope. And we even send encrypted radio signals into space to communicate with extraterrestrial civilizations. In 1974, we sent the Arecibo message into interstellar space. If some civilization can decipher it, they'll get a rectangle like this. It has all the information about humanity. At the top is our number system, then the atomic numbers, and then our DNA, which is pictured below then a human being itself, of course. Below is a diagram of our solar system. Earth, the third planet from the Sun, is slightly elevated. This is how the extraterrestrial civilization will understand which planet this message came from. Below is a diagram of the Arecibo radio telescope itself. Another option how to deliver a message to a distant planet is to literally send a mail delivery there. It could be a space probe. And we've already done that. These are Voyagers 1 and 2. They were launched in 1977 and are still operational. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first ever human-made object in interstellar space. It travels to distant stars and carries a message written on a golden record. The disk contains greetings in 55 Earth languages, a lot of music from different parts of our planet, different sounds like ocean noise, human voices and animal sounds. In addition, there are 116 images on the record. These are pictures of people and earthly landscapes. In these pictures, there's information about the sun and our DNA. The record case contains instructions and a needle to play the record. There's also a map of our galaxy's pulsars so that astronomers from an extraterrestrial civilization can find our solar system. The main disadvantage of sending a message this way is time. Voyager 1 will reach its first stop, the Galice 445 star, in 40,000 years. Voyager 2 will reach the Ross 248 star in 42,000 years. And in about 296,000 years, it'll pass Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. I can't wait. Also, an extraterrestrial civilization can detect us with calculations and formulas. All it takes is a little observation of the Sun. In star systems with planets, the host star doesn't stand still. It rotates around a small orbit. This is because the heavy star attracts the planet, but the planet also has its own gravity and resists. This shifts the star a little and causes it to orbit around. An extraterrestrial civilization can calculate this shift of the Sun and determine the mass of the planets near the star. Using such a method, astronomers were able to find 548 exoplanets. Now suppose we made contact with an extraterrestrial civilization near the closest star, Proxima Centauri. There's indeed an exoplanet there, but radiation from the host star would destroy any life forms. But imagine we still got a return signal. It would be the slowest chat in history, because our message would take 4.2 years to reach the planet, and we'd have to wait another 4.2 years to get a response. And so we arranged to meet. This civilization doesn't know how to fly into space. So we have to take the first step. Although Proxima Centauri is the closest star to our solar system, it takes about 73,000 years to travel there by conventional rocket. So we have to learn to travel at the speed of light. But even then, it would take 4.2 years to travel there. Imagine if we found extraterrestrial life on the other side of the Milky Way. Our galaxy is 100,000 light years wide. So the journey from edge to edge would take 100 millennia. So we either have to cheat the laws of physics or transfer all of human civilization to a giant spaceship that will travel from star to star for thousands of years. And when it launches from Earth, 
only the great 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 and many more greats of the first crew will be able to see another star system from the spaceship portal. Hey, can you move your head? I'm trying to see out the window. We're traveling through space at the speed of light. The route from Earth to the Sun at that speed will take only 8 minutes. But it would take us about 35 years to reach our destination. Which is, by the way, still very fast. By comparison, a conventional rocket would take about 600,000 years to make the journey. And here we are. It's a star system suspiciously very similar to our own. And our scientists suspect that life could exist here, just like on Earth. A red dwarf, 30% the size and weight of the sun, lies at the heart of this star system. But these are the planets orbiting the star that interest us most. The first of these is L9859b. Its size is somewhere between Earth and Mars, but it's very light. It's only half the mass of Venus. But life is impossible on this rocky planet. It's too close to the star, and it's so hot, you'd burn a cake if you tried baking it on its surface. It's about 100 degrees higher than the maximum of your oven. The planet makes a complete circle around its host star in just two days, compared to 365 for Earth. And it gets 22 times more energy than we get from the sun. So it's not only hot there, but there's a lot of dangerous radiation. The next planet is 2.8 million miles from its host star. That's 13 times closer than the distance from Mercury to the sun. And it makes a complete revolution around the star in 3.7 days. But what's interesting is that the planet is 30% bigger than the Earth and twice as heavy. So it belongs to the class of super-Earth planets. Such planets can be rich in water ice, methane, and hydrogen. These are some of the elements that are necessary for life's existence. Many scientists believe that it's on such planets that extraterrestrial civilizations can live. But because of the great weight of the planet, it has a strong gravitational force. So these civilizations may not be able to fly into space because it's harder for them to get out of the gravitational trap of a super-Earth planet. However, life isn't possible here because the planet is still too close to the host star. And just like in our solar system, the two nearest planets are too hot. But the third planet looks more promising. L9859d. It's almost twice as heavy as the Earth and 50% bigger. Scientists have calculated that about a third of its mass could be water. For comparison, the mass of all water on Earth is only 0.02%. The presence of water is the main condition for the emergence of life. But we can only guess where the water might be. It could be on the surface, but high temperatures can turn large oceans into giant clouds of steam. But water can also be contained in the groundwater below the surface. Well, we can't know that for sure yet. Let's move on to the next planet in the star system. This newly discovered planet is of the Super Venus class, L9859e. It's a rocky planet three times the size of Earth. The Super Venus class means that the planet is heavy enough to have an atmosphere, but the conditions there are more like a greenhouse. Different gases fill the atmosphere there. Star rays pass through them to the planet's surface, reflect off it, and rise upward but the dense gases don't let them leave the atmosphere, so the planet gets hotter and hotter. This is the greenhouse effect that we try so hard to avoid on Earth. On top of that, the stellar wind carries water vapor and other elements from the upper layers of the atmosphere into outer space. Life cannot exist on such a planet, nor could it ever originate, just like on Earth's twin sister, Venus. So far, all the planets we've looked at are outside the habitable zone of the host star. That's the sweet spot at a perfect distance from the star. Not too close so that the planet isn't too hot and the water there doesn't evaporate instantly. And not too far away so that the planet doesn't look like a cold desert. And planets B, C, D, and E are too close to the host star. But there's another hypothetical planet F in this star system located right in this sweet spot. This super-Earth candidate is 2.5 times heavier than our home planet. So we have hopes that it's a rocky world, just like the other planets in this star system. The weight of planet F is enough to have a dense atmosphere, and the temperature on its surface should be suitable for water to exist there in liquid form.
the planet makes a complete circle around its host star in 23 days, which literally means it's New Year every three weeks. It isn't very likely, though, that there's a civilization there that celebrates it. Indeed, the very existence of this planet is very doubtful because we still have no direct evidence. All the other planets have been discovered by the transit method. That's when we point our telescopes directly at a star and watch its brightness change. When there's a slight drop in the star's brightness, that's when a planet has passed between us and the star, like this dot. We have a short period of time while the planet is in the background of the star to determine its size and speed. Sometimes we can observe such transits of Mercury.